Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. You hit it. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on this beautiful Sunday. We declare it's a beautiful Sunday, whether you feel like it or not. Whether what is going on around you looks like it or not, God is good. Hallelujah. Without us. Come on in, come on in. Yes. Welcome. Your love was greater. Let's fellowship. Yes. <laughs> Name of Jesus Christ, my King. Nothing compares to me. It is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No audio? Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I can see that. No sound. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes to audio here in Love Assembly. Okay, great. There's no audio here. Okay. Go to at love love assembly love assembly ATL. Thank you. Go to Love Assembly 8 here. There's audio at Love Assembly 8 here on the other phone. You're going to have to um, I have to pin that It is. You have no equal. Let God you reign. Nothing can stand against 
What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Powerful name. Hallelujah. Glory. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, love assembly. Thank you, Jesus. What a powerful name. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. He's an awesome God. He's a good God. And we, we celebrate him. We love him. We thank him for his mercies. We thank him for his goodness. He's a good God. No matter what we're going through, we should always remember that God is good. God is good and his mercies endure forever. No matter the hardship we face, once we know that he is, we have that relationship with him and we know that he is good, he is kind, he is not man that he should lie. He does not behave like man. You see, God does not behave like man. That's the thing. God does not behave like man. He is a good God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's a good God. He's forever the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So how has our week been? I don't know what you've been through this week, whether it was good, whether it was ugly, whether it was beautiful. But I just want to remind you that God is a good God. He's a faithful God. He's forever the same yesterday, today, and forever. So today is just going to be an encouragement. And um, at first, I wanted to just go in the direction of what I call purpose over pressure. Purpose over pressure. Um, but the Lord is tearing my heart to really, really... Um, address um, um, what's going on, a lot of what's going on in marriages, in families today. Um, and then maybe I'll get into that later or maybe during the week I'll, I'll do a live on that if, um, if we run out of time. Psalm 119 verse 1 to um, 9 says, You're blessed when you stay on course, walking diligently on the road revealed by God. You are blessed when you follow his directions, doing your best to find him. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road he set. You, God, prescribe the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps may be steady keeping to the course that you set then i'll never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel thank you for speaking straight from your heart i will learn the pattern of your righteous ways i'm going to do what you tell me to do don't ever walk off and leave me that's psalm 119 verse 1 to 8 and you know today we are bombarded with all um, kinds of voices um, around us. We There's pressure to conform to the ways of other people. There's com pressure to compare ourselves. And we've got to come back, you know, to God. We've got to center ourselves and say, Lord, what really do you expect of me? What really do you want from me? I want to fulfill your pleasure. I want to fulfill your will. I want to seek your kingdom first and every other thing will be added. So this scripture really um, encouraged me because it says we are blessed when we stay on course. I'm 119 verse, verse 1. When we stay on course, when we stay on course, we are blessed. Not when we depart. And sometimes we depart and we do not know because our departure may not look sinful. Our departure may not look ugly, may not look like something really bad out there. But we've departed and we're not very conscious of it. And so we have to go back to him and say, Lord, lead me in the way that I should go. Lord, you have prescribed the right way to live. 
You have prescribed it. It's in your word and it's in our heart. When we stop to listen, when we quiet in ourselves, when we fellowship with him, when we read his word, when we understand his vocabulary, he, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to us um, that this is the way to go. This is the way to live. And he says, oh, that my steps may be steady. Oh, that my steps may be steady. There's so many good ways, but is it the right way for you? There's so many ways to live, but is it the right pattern for you? So this encouragement is to really go back to God, is to say, Lord, what is the way? Show me the way. And he has shown us what to do. He really has shown us. He really is, is speaking. He may not be shouting, but he really is speaking if we look at I mean, if we look into his word, the Bible says it is the word of liberty. It sets free. John 8, 32 says, whom the son sets free is free indeed. It says, when we look into the perfect law of liberty and we do not forget who we are, okay, keeping that image in us, I want to remind us and to remind myself as well that we are made in the image of God. We are not, uh, uh, how do I put, we are not a uh, um, um, fake um um, fake, we don't have the fake image of God. We are made in the express image of God. But because we are in this human vessel, because we are in the flesh, many times we fall short. And it's just for us to ask for grace to be able to walk in that image, you know, as closely as possible. We're comparing ourselves to other people. But really, God is the one that has the blueprint for your life. God is the one in heaven that said, let us make man in our image. Put your name there. Let us make Nike in our image. Put your name there and, and really internalize that. Okay, this is, let's make her or let's make him um, to look like this other person. Why are we comparing ourselves? It's pressure. So purpose will cause us to be uh, to um, overlook the pressure. What is your purpose for me? What is your purpose for me? That is what we should be asking God. And that will take us above the pressure to be like Miss A or Mr. B. That will put us because that we will be taking our blueprint directly from God. Hallelujah. And you know, this message is needed for so many of us. And even I myself, I need it to be able to go to him each time. I say, Lord, what exactly, what exactly is your pattern for my life? And to thank him for him choosing us, to thank him for even us being um, believers, knowing him. And that's why if you find people who don't know God, if you find people who don't um, have the Lord as their God in their hearts, it's always, that is where the pressure should be. I don't know about you. I always feel that pressure to tell them about Christ, to, you know, just to reach out. Because for me, that is the minimum. If they do not know Christ, how can they even begin to press into him? How can they even begin to say, I want to grow and uh, give me the meat of the word to pray? The Bible says the prayer of the person who is not righteous is an abomination to God. So for me, how do they live their lives even without having the Holy Spirit or without having a relationship with God? So yes, we have to go to the deep end. And those of us who are believers, us, we have to go deeper in God, go into the meat of the word, go into that growth, knowing him, hearing his voice, you know, and really pressing in and centering in him. Uh, but at the end of the day, even to what end? And it's wonderful for us to always give God pleasure by fellowshipping with him, you know, hearing his voice, reveling in his presence because it helps us against the storms of life. Um, but how about those who don't even know him at all? They need to come into the boat. They need to come into the kingdom. They even need to come into this understanding that they can have a relationship with the father. The father doesn't, he doesn't want anyone to be condemned. He doesn't want anyone uh, to go to hell, but he wants all to come to the knowledge of him, that salvation that he has been made available. And I know, yes, many of us want to move beyond, oh yes, the salvation made, we've been saved 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 10 years ago, and that's okay. And we've forgotten how to love the unbelieving. We've forgotten how to pull them into the kingdom. It's always, give me the meat of the word, give me the meat. And what are we doing with this meat of the word? Is it to be constipated with the word? Is it to be gloated? And is it to be, have a head full and big with, yes, have a person of faith. I know scripture. 
us X, Y, Z and all of that. But what are we doing with it? How is that light in us drawing other people to him? Even just minimal. Because if somebody is going to die tomorrow and they don't even know and they don't know the Lord, I mean, we're going to really worry about where they're going to end up and where their soul, you know, would really be. So in the same vein that we're seeking growth from God, in the same way that we are pressing into him to know him more, let's even do something with the little we know. Let's do something with the little we know. We are made in his image. And if we are made in his image and in his likeness, then we are made after the pattern of love. It is because of love that God said, let us make man in our, in our, in our image. It's because of love that God said, okay, let us send Jesus to go and redeem the sinful world, you know, Man had sinned over the years and the blood of bulls and goats were not enough to, to cleanse, you know, all the sins and everything. So Jesus had to be the one to go. And that is why we are forever in love with him because he was the, you know, like they say, the scapegoat. He was the one that, you know, agreed to come down and suffer on earth and that's why we're forever in love with him because he paid the ultimate sacrifice whenever god looks to jesus you know the the, the son his heart melts his heart is like okay yeah that's true you really went and you paid the sacrifice and you're seated on my right hand forever reminding me and making intercession that these are the people that you have said you will not wipe them out again. You will not ultimately destroy them again. Your anger will not last forever because when you look at the sun, you realize that, yes, the sun actually went down, came down from glory, you know, and went to the earth. You know, he's the bread of heaven, he's the bread of life, you know. Bread of heaven, you know, sent down from glory. It's awesome when we think about how deep this love is for us. I think we don't think about that love enough because when we think about it enough, we will not be sidetracked. We will not be um, um, sad about um, comparing ourselves, thinking that we haven't measured up where we think we should be far along in life. And when we say in life, in this world, you know, in this, with this world's goods and this world's, um, what the world, you know, has to offer, the things God said will be added to us. And they're added to us when we seek his kingdom and they're added to us if they're needed for the purpose that he has given us. And so when we compare, we are sidetracked because we have taken our eyes off Jesus. And I'm praying that we will not ever take our eyes off him. And for those of us who have taken our eyes off him, that we will put our eyes back on him, you know. And that is a reminder for me as well to keep my eyes on him ultimately because man cannot save you. No human being can save you. And we even thank God for pastors and leaders, you know. But may we follow the ones who really have the heart of God. May we follow the ones who really, really are hearing from God and who really want to, you know, uh, fulfill their own purpose as well. Some are healers, some are exhorters, some are teachers, you know, pure. Some are, who is God calling you to follow? You know, follow him, follow, follow the Lord. But just um, be careful also about which human um, you follow so that you're not sidetracked. So friends, it's time for us to step up in our love walk. And when we say love walk, to love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our minds. And when we do that, the pressure to please people, the pressure to be all these things is lifted. So for me, I'm pressing into purpose this week. I'm pressing into his love. I'm pressing into his word and so that I can be full of light and uh, be able to execute and manifest. Because like I always say, there is no purpose having this word and we're full of the word and full of the word and we're constipated with the word of God. But where is the outlet? Who are we teaching? Who are we showing the right way to go? Um, yeah, who are we sharing with? Who are we manifesting with at work? Um, just giving them a tiny bite of even the word that we are full of, you know, just that little light so that they can shine and they can be delivered. You know, some of us are healers, so we should, we need to press into it. There really is no basis for comparison because even the challenges we go through are not the same. If my challenge I've gone through and I've overcome, um, I would want to help people along those lines, different from what you have overcome. You see, some people have overcome deep poverty, so deep, and the Lord helped them and 
give them insight and that's all they want to let people know that you don't have to be poor you don't have to be poor jesus has paid the price for it and these are the tools and these are the scriptures and these are the ways to go about it you know don't be in debt you know and blah 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 but some of us also want to release the compassion of god uh people don't have to be homeless you don't have to be homeless he's a father he said the solitary in families you don't have to be orphaned yes you don't have a natural father or mother but in the body of christ in the church in the kingdom um, um you don't have to be homeless some have gone ahead and been led to set up orphanages and shelters to 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 train children to house them and release them back into the world it is a lofty vision it is not less lofty than someone who has a mega church and in a mega church again yes people's lives are people are re receiving spiritual growth and they're growing and they're becoming amazing you know and many even are being fed um, weekly till they are strong enough to be on their feet this is what kingdom is all about okay so there is no pressure when we walk in purpose there is no pressure if you feel pressure then you have to go back to your purpose you have to go and center again i don't want to be pressured nobody should pressure me by comparing me to my husband or oh, what he's doing is no and he should not be pressured uh, to also be like me as well Add to each his own everyone received their matching orders from God. He did not save me. I did not save him. God, Jesus saved my soul. Hallelujah. He saved my soul and he's the number one person that I am responsible to before I am responsive to, to my husband or my leader. Um, or my pastor or any other person because your pastor can only see so far because he was not there when heaven had a meeting over your life hallelujah father we thank you someone is just set free right there and i'm not saying don't have a pastor i'm not saying going to go go to a regular traditional church go to any church go to a traditional church go to an online church like we're here i don't even know is this a church is this a fellowship we are the church i am a church i am the church that is why i come live on sundays and whenever i want to and you can go live whenever you want to as well whenever you feel the lord stirring you your heart for a word tell people you're going live even if there's only four people there go live and release the light that you have don't hide your light don't say oh okay i'm not a preacher i'm not a pastor well but christ has given you light there are things you know and some people need to know those things whether on a weekly basis or maybe just on a one-off you go live and then you don't go live till two months but you don't know the light that someone will catch at that moment and what it will do for them and they will go on to be this mega amazing person that you were the link, missing link and that missing voice that voice that needed to come into their life that day that midweek or that monday morning that, that would just completely set them free or completely sh um, show them the next levels because these things guys let's be truthful jesus will not come down to earth again god will not come down to earth again bodily or human or whatever he has given us the holy spirit and it's the holy spirit in us nudging us to say this is the right way to live you know this is the way to live this is the way to go we read psalm 119 verse 1 again it says you're blessed when you stay on course and it says don't go off on your own walk straight and narrow he's prescribed the way to live now you expect expect us to live it you know it's it's awesome it's awesome and um when we go down to verse 11 or so it says how can a young man cleanse his way or how can he live a clean life by being by reading the map of the word in single, I'm in single pursuit of you. Don't let me miss the road signs you have posted. There are road signs God has posted. And some of us are the road signs for others. So we cannot keep quiet and we cannot hide that light. And the, tr the Passion Translation of 1 1 Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a young man stay pure? Only by living in the word of God and walking in his truth. I have longed for you with the passion of my heart. Don't let me stray from your directions. Hmm. Hallelujah. I consider your word to be my greatest treasure. And I treasure it in my heart to keep me from committing sins, treason away against you. So that's it. When we keep his word in our heart, we will not sin. We will not fall. And when we fall, we get up again and we know that we have forgiveness um, in him to ask for forgiveness and to move on. And so, friends, um, 
the continuation of this i'm going to do something probably during the week and i'm going to talk about how we deal harshly with ourselves in marriage and in the relationships god has given us so um, i can't lump that with this message so i'm going to do something during the week from my page at nike adeyemi today my page didn't come live there was no voice on it and i think it has to do with that phone because the time I use that phone for love assembly, they don't hear anything. And we have to switch to my page. I like to come live from both pages. But God will help me. <laughs> God will help me. During the week, I bought a new phone. But the other phone is still acting up. It is well. So, friends, we... Um, I mean, that's just to show that, yeah, we're not immune to challenges in the world, but we just make do with what we have been given. And we do not stress ourselves. But you know what? I am just too many i've had too many cases of abuse too many cases of evil too many cases of wickedness of people one to another in a marriage situation you see i don't want to tag people who know my me know i don't want to tag myself as that marriage coach that really okay maybe relationship but i've had that tussle in my life people say you're a marriage coach you always talk about marriage 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 you know and there was a time i thought that was cheesy you know that sounded cheesy um, yeah, because you'll expect a pastor's wife to talk about marriage. You expect her to talk about family, about children, because, yeah, that's the softer side. Yeah, that's what she has to talk about anyway. And I don't want it to be something I have to talk about. It has to be a calling. It has to be God calling me to talk about it. And is that what he wants me to talk about all the time or once in a while when there's a word stirring from him? Then I talk about it. But not to be tagged that that's all I talk about. And marriage is important. It's important. Family is important. But I'm, I also believe that some people may not be called to marriage. So why should we glorify marriage? We cannot glorify marriage to the exclusion of people who are single and who will not marry or do not have desire to marry. Because there is no marriage in heaven. But this is it. Mine is if you cannot do it or if you do not want to do it the right way, then don't go into it. Stay single, happy, let the light emanating from you be a happy, fulfilled single. Um, even your life as a single can minister to those who are married. <laughs> you know, some married people see some single people and they're like, oh my God, I want to be like her. I want to be like you, him. And that's because they are not, ah, uh, yes. Someone said learning from you in relationships generally. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I try to bring that balance because hey, uh, um, um, I'm good um, with God. I'm good in marriage. I'm good. I'm not saying I don't want to be married, but the thing is I want people to know that it's God first. It's God first. And if he brings another person into your life and you're sure it's God and you go into that relationship, then you both had better do it the right way um, so that it glorifies him so that more people want to come to Christ because he says that our marriages are supposed to be like Christ and the church. Um, so that it's abuse free, um, not abusing one another. And people say, are they even Christians? If they were non Christians, well, even non some non Christians don't even treat themselves ugly, you know. So, part of the ways in which our light, in which our walk with God can impact the world is first of all, let it impact from our homes, let it impact first from our homes, let it, if God has given you children, love them and let them through that come to Christ, you know. So, Again, yeah, I'm going off into that. But really what we're talking here about is that purpose. Purpose over pressure. Friends, when you center your purpose, when you get your matching orders from him, first of all, your purpose is to be, uh, be a Christian. Your purpose is to give him pleasure. Your purpose is to adore him, to worship him. Let your life be a sweet fragrance, you know, um, to him so that he's pleased. And then... That's a vertical relationship. Then the horizontal is that because you're not living in heaven, <laughs> you're living on the earth, God is at the same time releasing you to impact your co-workers, to impact the people you meet in the mall, strangers and friends, you know, believers and non-believers, to impact people. And so they see him in you and he is glorified and you return to him and say, thank you, God, for today. I hope I represented you well. I hope we did good. They didn't see you, but they saw me, but they saw you through me, you know, that kind of a thing. So it's not just the vertical relationship, it's the horizontal as well, you know, 
for the people and that, that we meet, the people that he allows us to come in contact with, and then in specifics, what he's giving you to do. So if he says you are a cake maker, you say, Lord, okay, I'm, teach me, Lord, how to make my cakes excellently and teach me good customer service. Let me show light. Let me show love as I deliver the cakes, as I bake the cakes. Teach me, lead me to books to read, lead me to conferences to attend where I can be an excellent cake maker or an excellent restauranter where people are satisfied with their delivery. Okay, and when they are satisfied with their delivery, they're like, wow, are there still people like this on the earth? Okay, when, P when you return, if um, people paid you more than they should pay, you're honest enough to return it. And people are like, what? You know, who still does that in this world? And they say, yes, the people that are part of the kingdom, those Jesus people, they are the ones that do that. You know, so again, so that's, that's the specificity of our purpose. Um, um, first being a child of God, receiving that and all that he comes with, speaking the truth, loving him, doing all that he expects of us as a child of God. And then next is, Lord, where is my niche? Where is the specific place I am supposed to operate, you know, every day or every now and then? And then that way, um, everybody gets um, um, impacted, yeah? everybody. I get impacted by the person who... Um, what who makes clothes or who sells clothes because I cannot come to you naked I cannot I have to put on clothes and I don't make clothes I don't sell clothes I preach I talk <laughs> for a living I heal I mean God heals through me you know and all of that um through the words he speaks people are healed through my life <laughs> but I must put on clothes to come into their life it come into their living rooms on tv on the social media I'm you know to hold the microphone I must put on clothes so I need the person who will sell clothes to me and the person who will say hey these are the colors you know that suit you um, to put on because that is some people's purposes to beautify us on the outside and that is not carnal the only thing is that as they do it let them be emanating light let us be happy in buying their clothes let us know that you know um, um, there's a presence about it and they're doing it in a godly and in a caring way and in a way that um, God's kingdom is represented hallelujah so Ah, uh, friends, I don't know if you got anything from there on this beautiful Sunday. Um, yeah, so go do you. And that is the you that God made. Yeah, the you that God made. Not the you that has become bitter. Yeah, not the you that has become so twisted and ugly because of what people have done to you. The real you. Say, Lord, show me the real me. You know, that, 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 that pure, pure me not the one who's twisted because of the life's pressures and life's um, 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 ugliness. And we've all seen it, whether in our youth or even now, or whether even just now before you came on this live, or maybe even just last week, someone has shown you life. Has, we can't continue to live like that. We've got to go above it um, and say, you know what, Lord, I just thank you. Even people who are in a physical prison, um, if they accept Jesus there or they accept Jesus before going in, that is a safe place for them. They've been sentenced and they're believing God to, for a short sentence for forgiveness or to cut it short because they're truly sorry for what they did. But you know that there's one place that even while they're there, they have Jesus in their heart. They can wake up and say, I know it's going to be a hard day of labor and whatever we have to do in the prison, but... In my heart, I thank you, Jesus, that I have you and I can talk to you. You know, and all of that, before the prison warder comes and says, Hey, hey, go here, go here. I thank you, Lord, that in my heart I am free. On the outside, I know I'm confined and locked into this place, but in my heart, I am free and I can talk to you. For me, I believe that is a level. That is a level for people to be in their sentence for whatever they did or didn't do, but they don't even have christ and they don't have a relationship then it's totally there's no horrid vertical relationship and of course there's no horizontal one as well for the time that they are confined you know so friends we've got to pull people in and not enjoy the kingdom alone and not enjoy this relationship that is so cozy that we have because even for those of us who are married or maybe your parents have done you bad or ugly or maybe you're single you live with your parents and you know, you're not happy with them at, in, at some point in time or you're not happy with your best friend, you know. That is the joy that you can go to God and say, you know what, I'm not even talking to anybody right now. I'm not doing the horizontal thing right now. 
I'm going to retreat and do the vertical. Like, God, just help me. I'm angry. What do I do? And you will hear the comforting words of God. You will also hear his words of rebuke. Because if you are wrong, he will tell you, hey, you were wrong. I love you still, but you were wrong. You know, you were, you were, you know, you were, you were, you were, um, how do I put it? You were harsh. Go back and say sorry. You know, but that is because you can return to the vertical relationship and hear what he has to say and be encouraged and be comforted before you then return to whoever you are dealing with, that co-worker or that spouse. Or, and then it's better that way because you have been refreshed. That's how I do it. That's how I roll. And, um, and yeah, and then sometimes I forget to, yeah, so I can go off a bit, <laughs> you know. But when I remember, I'm like, wow, hello. You are the love of my life. <laughs> you, you know, are the hope that I cling to. Jesus, you mean more than this world to me, you know. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. I want the silver and the gold, but I wouldn't exchange him for the silver or gold, you know. I won't exchange you. I won't trade you for a husband. I won't trade you for a wife. I would not, I'm talking about exchange. I will not exchange. I will have you and have those things, you know. So, friends, the, in the way that the world is so harsh these days, you know, I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm, Nigeria on my heart every day, 24-7, well, almost 24-7. Nigeria on my heart, you know, and other parts of the world on my heart. I have to steady myself sometimes not to take all of that in. And this is what I tell Nigerians or people who are suffering in major parts of the world where there really is a pandemic, a leadership pandemic. I mean, not even here, we, I mean, not just the pandemic, the COVID-19, but a leadership pandemic. I mean, talking about dictatorship, talking about ugly, what do you do? You just have to let the Lord be your leader and say, you know what, Lord, just, you are the governor among the nations and I subject myself to you. Hallelujah. I want us to pray in a moment concerning this Delta, what's it called, COVID-19 Delta strain or whatever that is springing up in some places I'm like, no, we are not going to have this. We are done enough with this pandemic. And we hear that even people who have been vaccinated are even catching it and all of that. This is, you see, the devil is not sparing anything. He's not, <laughs> you know. And so we have to up our game and say, Lord God, you are the healer. Lord, you are the physician of physicians. You are the good God. You are the good Lord. And we are yours and we put our foot down and we take authority over, you know, the, the, the space we are in, over our communities. We are kings and priests in this earth. We decree and it shall be established. And we say no more death, no more ravaging of this, of people with, with, with ugly diseases. No more. Enough is enough. You know, when we say enough is enough, then it so shall it be. We must not allow these things anymore. People's lives should not just be snuffed out. People should not just suffer anyhow when we are in the world. So, friends, it's time to take our rightful places with esteem and with the, the, the power in that, that we have, the power of God in us and the light that we are and the image of God. Many times we forget that image. Friends, as we go into this week, do not forget that you are made in his image. Carry that image in your mind. Walk your, keep your head high up, okay? Um, keep your head high up. We had a testimony during the week. I'm sure they won't mind me sharing it. There's a family, I won't, I won't mention their name, they won't mind me sharing it. And they came this close, you know, you know, times when you come this close. And I've had situations that I'm going to have come this close and I'm thinking, Lord, would you not deliver me? Would you not deliver me? I mean, like, there's a deadline. You know, there was a deadline for um, um, to make a move, to acquire a move from one house to the other. And there was the deadline. And they came this close. And then the deadline was shifted. And we're like, okay, thank you, Lord. The deadline was shifted. You know, the miracle came. Or, well, the half miracle came from an, an angle unexpected. And that was still something. And we said, thank you. And then the deadline was shifted. And then that deadline was now coming close again. And we're like, God. And then God showed up. You know, 
And I don't know where you are, what situation you are right now, where you are, whether you are that close to being homeless, whether you are that close to being thrown out of school because you've not paid your school fees. You know, maybe you are even this close to death because the doctors have said you're, you're being given um, um, two weeks to live or one month to live and you are counting the days and you are this close. Enough! Jehovah God, our Father, our Father, show up. Show up, great physician. Show up. Jesus still shows, showed up when Lazarus was dead. Yes, he was late according to human calculation, but he still showed up. Show up, Lord, for that deadline. Show up like you showed up for this family. That even at the nick of time, I think two days to the close of that deadline, uh, you know, they, and they approved the house they were to move into. They approved it at the nick of time, you know. And, you know, our hearts were in our mouths like, God, are you not going to, are you not going to do it, Lord? You know? And so where they said no, it means that that was not the house. It, means, it meant that there was a better place. Hallelujah. I know we've come, I've come through that a lot where I'm like, God. And then he shows up and then, you know, something happens and I can breathe, you know, that sigh of relief. He is good. Hold on to him to the end. Hold on. Job said, though he slay me, I will yet praise him. But it was not God that was slaying him. It wasn't God that was killing him. It was the enemy. He didn't understand. He had limited knowledge there. It was a battle. Hallelujah. So this week, I don't know right now, as you're in this live or those who watch this replay um, on the handle of Love Assembly, I don't know what you've come this close and you're afraid and you think he wouldn't show up and you're thinking that would be the end of him. Relax. He's a good God. He's a good God. He is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful and he will take you and I, he will take us above that pressure, that pressure that is, that we're feeling right now. He will take us above it in Jesus name. Center yourself and say, Lord, Show me the way out and continue to speak his word into the situation. Continue to speak it. Continue to speak it. The psalmist said, I have been young and old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken. The righteous forsaken. Or he seed begging bread. He said, this, I have not seen the righteous forsaken. That He will always make a way of escape. Lord, open our eyes to that way of escape. Sometimes it's a simple instruction. Sometimes it's a slight instruction. Apply to that place. Sometimes we don't see it, but we're still holding on. No, no, no. If Elijah had held on to the brook, the brook dried up. And he said, go, I've commanded the widow. What if he said, no, Lord, I'm staying here at this brook. And the Lord said, the brook has dried up. It's dried. My provision is not in that place for you anymore. Watch out for where the new provision is. But if you keep saying, ah, no, this is the brook that God led me. He led me to this location and I'm going to stay here. But this is him, the same voice telling you that that brook has dried up. Hallelujah. Even right now, for me, where I'm right now, people are wondering, you know, back in Nigeria, you're my, and now I jokingly tell people, I don't even know whether it's a joke, that I think I'm in like some exile. Whatever. Exile, whatever. Yes, I'm in this location. And for so long, it's like, when am I going back? When am I going? But God has said, breathe. Just be. When it's time, I'll tell you it's time. You can't keep living and stretching your neck, stretching your neck, stretching your neck to what is happening in other places. When you're supposed to execute here. He said, when the time is come, boom, I'll tell you, we'll tell you it's time and you get up and you will go. Hallelujah. So this is my location for now. I'm not going to sit down and be crying on why I can't go to Nigeria, why I can't go yet or, and all of that. So I don't know whether that word is for somebody. The instructions come gently. They come, they don't come in a harsh, you know, it's always so gentle and sometimes we overlook it. But when we obey and when we follow that prompting, wow, it's, it's, you, you look back and say, what if I didn't obey to put in that application? What if I didn't go and check that house, that property, the one I least thought it would be, it, it became the one, the right one, you know, what if I didn't say yes to him? Because sometimes we're looking at the packaging and it doesn't look like what we expect. <laughs> and sometimes it's just a test. Hallelujah. And may we pass the test this week in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for healing. We pray for 
your power to come through for everyone that is in need. Above all, let them hear your voice. Let them draw nearer to you in the vertical relationship, to hear you, to, to be in that place of a warm embrace and to center themselves, for us to center ourselves away from the noise and the many voices, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this will be a different week for everyone watching and anyone who will watch even after now. Let this be a different and a unique gift, a week um, for everyone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, thank you. Follow us at Love Assembly. Keep following us, especially those who are following my handle already. And even on my handle, I do lives during the week you know, or um, places where I speak. Sometimes I record it and take advantage of it um, for growth, just for resources. Um, that's it. I'm not your regular preacher, minister, pastor's wife. I just move as the Lord leads me. And sometimes I come live unannounced, you know. Um, so it's all about just being in that relationship with him, you know. And, and these days, yes, you know, even with the, the, what is happening in the world, we've all learned now that, um, yes, have your long-term plans, have your long-term plans and your goals, but yes, it take each day as it comes and show up and say, Lord, when you wake up, Lord, what are we doing today? <laughs> is there anything specific, you know, and be ready for him to turn you in whatever direction he wants to um, turn you in. So friends, God bless you. Stay blessed till I come your way again, till we come your way again here um keep shining keep walking in his love keep growing um in jesus name god bless you thank you lord hallelujah